channel. Today I have another what I'm burning candle video for you guys. This is what I like to do every month or so to just generally go over what candles I'm burning, what I'm enjoying, what I'm not enjoying, how my candles are performing. This is kind of what I like to do instead of giving general reviews for individual candles. Unfortunately, that's just kind of my least favorite candle content to watch is just general formal reviews of a single candle. For me personally, I just think they go on for very long and they become repetitive and after a few minutes you kind of just get the gist of if they like the candle or not so instead of doing those long formal reviews of just single candles I like to combine them all into one video and kind of just go over my general thoughts I don't really get too deep into everything here but to me what comes down to me enjoying a candle is if I like the scent if it performs well and if I would repurchase it and I feel like I can just generalize that into to a smaller review in a larger video. So anyways, with all that being said, let's get into what I have here. All right, so up first, I am going to entitle this section of the video as things I picked up but I did not throw in a haul video or did not mention. And basically what I'm gonna do for this segment is just show you guys some miscellaneous things that I picked up that I just didn't have time to either film or they just missed the filming of a video, but I still want to mention them here in this segment. So up first, I have a really exciting one. If you were following me on the community YouTube page or my Instagram, you would know that Kringle Candle Halloween was being restocked intermittently for the past couple of weeks and a lot of the now sold out scents were just coming back in stock and the one candle that I missed out on this year that I just saw a lot of buzz about a lot of people really loved it was Sinister. So when this came back in stock on the website, I just had to order it because I just seen so many good things. Initially, I didn't order it because it sounded kind of like a gourmand candle to me. But then I read the scent notes again and I was like, wait, why didn't I order this? It sounds really, really good. So the scent notes on this one are top is ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cardamom. The mid is Moscato wine, dark plum, and cranberries. And the base is amber, vanilla, coconut, and musk. Yeah, and this one I can totally understand the hype behind. It's got a really nice, fruity, almost jam-like quality to it. When I first picked this one up, it really reminded me of a Wild Berry Jam Donut from Bath & Body Works, if you've ever smelled that one. I think I remember seeing people comparing this one to the Reserve Kringle Candle Jelly Donut Candle, and I can totally 100% see why. This is like a delicious, fall spiced jelly filled donut and I really like it honestly sinister is like such a misleading name and it's such a spooky label for such a nice fall gourmand candle honestly calling this one sinister is sinister in and of itself because this one's actually super nice and sweet but it also is a little bit deep as well. You, you get that deep wine note with the dark plum and that tart cranberry in this one is really nice. Honestly, I'm surprised they locked this one into being in the Halloween collection because I feel like if they put this in the reserve line, it would do really well. And I feel like a lot of people would like it and you could also just get it throughout the year instead of waiting on Halloween. But this is actually really good. If this comes back in stock next year, I would say definitely be on the lookout for this one if you are a fall gourmand lover. All right, so up next, here we have some new South of Sanity wax melts and full disclosure these were sent to me by Virgil to try out but up first here we have the black licorice candy and the plague. Now I'm grouping these two together because they are both black licorice scents. Black licorice candy is your classic take on the black licorice and plague is a black licorice with a twist. So yeah, black licorice candy literally smells like the black Jelly Belly jelly beans. And it is super strong on cold. So if you are looking for an authentic black licorice scent, and I mean authentic, you want all that black licorice, no vanilla, this is the one that you're going to want to go for. And Plague is an interesting take on a black licorice scent. Honestly, this one is one of my favorites that Virgil has sent me. 
This one has a specific absinthe note in it, along with a star anise and a little bit of black licorice. It's also got a little bit of like a cinnamon kick in it as well. But yeah, this is a super unique take on a black licorice scent. And I really enjoy this one. The absinthe is very special and I'm really enjoying this. All right, so now transitioning into what I am actually currently burning, but still on the same path of things that I have not shown you guys yet. We have Kringle Candles Bourbon Bonfire. So this is another one of those one-off candles that I kind of got in between videos and I didn't really know where to talk about it. I did give a small review of this one in my last What I'm Burning video actually, but that was as a daylight and now I have the full three wick version of this scent. And yeah, it still kicks ass. This is an amazing fall scent. Honestly, I am very surprised with how intensely smoky this scent is. Like genuinely, this gives like Witch's Cauldron, Witching Hour, the Kringle Candle Fire from the Reserve line. This gives it a run for the money for how intensely smoky this is. Like there was genuinely times when I was burning this candle where I was like, wow, I'm literally in the middle of a forest burning. There is a forest fire outside. So yeah, if you cannot handle a smoky scent, don't go for this one. But if smoke's right up your wheel, house and you just want the smokiest candle possible definitely think about getting this the notes on this are tennessee whiskey golden aged rum crushed clove cinnamon sticks cedar wood sandalwood and smoked vanilla bean yeah this is such a gorgeous scent you get that whiskey and rum note right off the top it's super boozy and then you get that smoldering campfire from the cedar wood note in here and you do get a little bit of that smoked vanilla bean as well it just kind of serves to make this candle very smooth and you do just get like a touch of like a fall spice but yeah as someone who generally is out on the kringle candle fall collection this is actually very close to like cracking my top 10 kringle candles and this three wick is performing really really well if you've had these three wicks before you would know that they burn so cleanly and this scent in the three wick is actually super strong it's performing very well for me. So yeah, if you're looking for a nice smoky, boozy, campfirey, woody scent for your fall, I would highly, highly recommend this one. Honestly, I might have to get another one. I've burned it down to the halfway. These burn really fast, by the way. The Kringle Candle Three Wicks always burn super fast, which I personally like. I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of person who likes to go through a candle a little bit quicker because I have so many scents to burn through. But yeah, those are my thoughts on this bourbon bonfire. All right, so up next, let's talk about what I am actually currently burning right now just off camera, and that is Yankee Candles Jack-O-Lantern. So I just released my Yankee Candle Halloween and Fall Haul, so I'm not gonna go too in depth on this one other than to tell you guys, I still love this scent. It's amazing. It's just as good as I remember it being. That spicy, sweet, savory pumpkin in this one is so addicting. This one has been performing decently well for me. Right now I'm burning it and it's about a five six strength, which is kind of normal for these Yankee Candle two wick signatures. What I will say that I don't remember from last year very much is that these actually soot quite a lot. Lot. Like as I am talking right now, I am just seeing the clouds of smoke off of these wicks on here. So if you don't like a sooty candle performance, I don't think you guys are going to enjoy this one. The flames also burn really high on this. You have to keep them very trimmed in between burns. So overall, I'm not going to go out and just recommend that you buy a bunch of these two wick signatures. But this scent is just so good and so nostalgic to me that I can look past the burn and I can Maybe it a little bit and it'll be fine. All right, so up next, let's talk Bath and Body Works. Up here first, I have Spiced Pumpkin and Patchouli. So I've given this one a couple of burns now. Obviously you can see this wax is dirty. This is just something that happens with this line in particular. I've always known that this has a dirty wax pool every single time I buy these. So yeah, while the burn is not the cleanest, this is still a very strong performer for me. That spiced pumpkin mixed with the patchouli is such a beautiful, gorgeous scent. Still one of my absolute favorite fall Bath & Body Works candles of all time. If only they could fix this dirty wax problem it would be a perfect candle and up next here we have another classic pumpkin candle from bath and body works pumpkin carving 
Now, this is another one that I have burned a couple of times, and this one is a lot cleaner than the other one. I don't know what it is about those White Barn Neutral Collection candles. They're always dirty, and these ones seem to be fine, even though I'm almost certain these are the same exact wicks and wax formula, so not sure what happened there. But yeah, not a lot to say about this one other than the fact that it's still strong. It's still amazing. Absolutely love this candle. And this packaging is just 10 out of 10. When this is lit and burning, it looks so cool, so spooky. I love the stained glass. Honestly, I don't know how they are going to top themselves after this design, but I'd love to see what they have in store for next year. All right, so for my last Bath & Body Works candle I have here is another one that I got in between videos, and that is the one that has been hyped up for the past 10 years. People have been wanting this candle to return for a long time, and Bath & Body Works finally decided that this fall was the moment that they wanted to bring this one back, and that is is Radiant Red Maple. So this is one that I had heard tons of buzz about. In the past couple of years, I saw a bunch of people saying, hey, we want Bath & Body Works to bring this one back. It was amazing. And I believe this is actually the very first time that this has ever been brought back since 2015, which is absolutely crazy to me after smelling this candle. This is such a nice, gorgeous fall scent. You get a really nice, juicy apple in this mixed with a toasted marshmallow from Marshmallow Fireside. And then you get those smoldering embers as well. I totally understand why people were obsessed with this one and really wanted it to return. And I am so mad that Bath & Body Works really disrespected everyone with this one because not only is this jar packaging just awful, but the burn is as well. I lit this one up for the first time yesterday because I was constantly smelling it. I love this scent on cold. I could not wait to get home and burn it. And after one hour of burning this candle, I have to say genuinely, I think this might be the worst performance I've ever had out of any Bath & Body Works candle. The wicks on this one are so thin and tiny that they almost instantly dudded out. As you can see on the side of this one, I cotton balled this. Uh, it, it did not even pull out in my first hour. I ended up burning this candle for a couple of hours actually, and it still did not pull out. Yeah, it's just so sad. This is such an amazing, amazing scent. And it just feels like they just rushed this one into production for whatever reason. They dropped it as a limited edition candle. And I can't help but think that this was maybe an afterthought that they saw people on the internet really wanted it back. And in the past month or so, they just said, hey, well, let's give it to them and let's just rush it out the door and, and release it as a limited edition candle because people really want it back and people will buy it if we do it in this way. And I just wish that they, one, put this into the main line and two, they gave it the respect that it deserved and the quality that it deserved because this is just not it. I bought two of these because I loved the scent on this one and I was hoping that it would perform well, but now I'm kind of just sitting on one and a half dud of a candle. I mean, I'm going to continue to burn this one, but I'm just going to have to baby it every single time and it's just going to feel like a chore to me instead of a candle that I'm really excited to burn, you know? So yeah, overall, really disappointed with this one. I hope they bring this one back next year in the main line and really quality test it before just throwing it onto shelves. If this was your favorite candle ever and they brought it back in this way, I'm sorry that they did you like this. But yeah, just a super disappointing one overall. So to get off of that, that bummer of a candle and talk about something that is not disappointing. Let's talk about Oh Reliable Trick or Treat from Goose Creek. Absolutely love, love, love this candle. Now, the one thing that I do have to say about this is it's not as strong as I remember last year's being, but honestly, if last year's three wick was a 10 out of 10 strength on it, this one's like an eight out of 10. So I'm really not complaining about it too much. This has been having a semi-decent clean burn on there, and it has not been sitting as much as I remember my old Goose Creek candles doing. And I've been hearing a lot about that this year that Goose Creek has kind of fixed their sooting problems at least a little bit. And I'm definitely seeing it with this one. So props to Goose Creek for that. But yeah, this is still one of my absolute favorite candles of all time. I wish it was still available on the site. If you guys are making lists for next year on what you want to tackle, definitely write this name down and 
and get there when it drops because this one is absolutely worth it. Now let's talk about my arguably most surprising candle burn that I've had this season, maybe even this year. Like what I'm about to say right now, I could not have imagined me saying a couple of years ago. And that is that Witch's Cauldron is actually super good. So if you guys watched my Goose Creek video, you would know that I kind of had a love-hate relationship with this thing. When I bought it in the large jar two years ago, I absolutely hated it. I gave it one burn and I could not stomach it. But over the years, it kind of just hung around in the back of my mind and I kept going back to smell it. And I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot this year. I'm gonna do it. Maybe there's something that I'm missing in this candle. And now I'm here to tell you there was something I was missing in this candle. This is such a nice, spooky Halloween witch scent. The patchouli in this one is still very strong, still overbearing, almost headache inducing, but very mood setting. And when you burn this one, the star anise comes through so much. There were times when I was burning this one that I was like, oh, there is a little bit of that black licorice in there and it's super nice. This also has like a pepper-like quality to it. Not that it smells like black pepper or anything, but in the way that it burns, the way that when you smell black pepper and it just kind of hits your senses and you're like, whoa, like that's spicy. The patchouli in this one actually kind of acts like that. When I was burning this one, it was super strong and it was just kind of like assaulting your senses, but like in a good way where you're just like, whoa, that's like crazy. The thing that I'm smelling right now, definitely a unique burning experience. And I am just sad that I kind of robbed myself of having the experience of this for the past couple of years. This is now my formal apology for all of the Witch's Cauldron fans out there. You guys were onto something and I just couldn't see it, but now I do. And I love this one actually. I very much like burning this, but I am going to say this is not for everyone. So like, do not, if you don't like earthy, dirty patchouli and star anise like if you just can't stomach those you are not going to like this one and if you don't know how to feel about those ones and you get this one and you hate it maybe wait a couple years and you'll end up enjoying it because i know i certainly did so yeah those are my brand new thoughts on witch's cauldron from goose creek very excited that i ended up loving this one this one may in fact become a halloween staple for me all right, and now to round out the video, we are going to be talking some homeworks. And up first here, we have Haunted Woods. And yep, she's still amazing, love her. This is arguably my favorite homeworks candle of all time. I've been having a very good burn on this one. Still super addicting, the black rose, the dark plum, the amber in this one is stellar. This one is a little bit lighter than the classic wraparound label version that I had last year. Overall, I prefer that packaging way more than this like spider web design. Like this is cute, but the other design was a lot more spooky and I love the wax color of the other one. That deep dark turquoise blue is like super, Super cool. But yeah, I burned this one at least two or three times this season and it's still amazing. This is my go-to burn. Can't get enough of this one. Can't recommend it enough. If you want to go ahead and bite the bullet on the QVC price for this double set of this candle, I would say it's well worth it. I absolutely adore this candle, but you guys already knew that. And now to my final candle of the video, the final candle that I have been burning this season so far, we have Palo Santo Pumpkin. Now, if you saw my homeworks video, you would know that I kind of had mixed thoughts on this one. I generally overall liked it, but it was kind of strange on cold. It kind of gave me like a barbecue sauce type note in it. And I mentioned that it was a bit light on cold. There was not a ton of scent or anything. And unfortunately, while burning, I have to say the same thing, not about the barbecue sauce, but about the strength of this one. The rumors I heard about this one were true, unfortunately. It is not very strong at all, but it's also not scentless. If I had to rate this on a strength from one to 10, I would have given it about a three or a four, maybe a light five, but no, no more than that. And that is such a bummer that I have to say that because when I was getting whiffs of this scent, light as it was, this is such an awesome fall scent. The barbecue sauce type note that I was smelling on cold definitely goes away while you are burning it. And what you're left with is a nice like pumpkin, almost bakery pumpkin pastry with a nice smoky Palo Santo wood. 
I've only burned this one once, but I really want to burn it again. I absolutely loved when I was burning this, when I could smell it every so often, I would just get hit in the face with a little bit of scent from this one. And what I was smelling was absolutely amazing. The scent on this one is not a detriment to it, but the strength most certainly is. I don't know what it is with these Homeworks candles and why they just can't jam pack this with scent. There is so much wax in here. This is a general problem that I have with a lot of Homeworks scents now, unfortunately. Unfortunately, and it's kind of the reason why I haven't been buying them as frequently as I was last year. I really, really need them to just start fixing this problem because these scents are absolutely amazing. But when you're charging like $24 for sale price on this large candle that barely produces any more scent than like a Bath and Body Works three wick, then I just don't really know how to justify it regardless of how good the scent is. And that's also with like not being able to use your rewards on sales which is a whole nother can of worms, but like, I, I don't know, like this company is definitely capable of producing genuinely awesome products and they're just like in a rut right now and I just don't know when they're gonna get out of it. So yeah, this one unfortunately is sold out on their website and on QVC, but honestly, even if it was available, I could not fully recommend it to you if you had a big house. I'm burning it in my small room and every so often I would be able to smell it, but it wasn't filling my room with scent, so I couldn't really recommend it. But somehow, if this returns next year and they turn up the scent like 20 notches then I would 100% recommend this one but the scent performance and quality on this is just not there for this so I can't. All right, so that is everything I have for you guys today. Let me know if you guys have purchased or burned any of the candles that I mentioned here in this video and what you guys think of them, or just let me know what you guys are burning and enjoying this fall season. We are really in the thick of it here. It is full on fall candle burning season. And I, for one, am very ecstatic about that. So anyways, leave a like if you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more candle and spooky content because I always have more on the way very soon. Until the next one, I will see you guys later. Bye.